I'm Craig Slate. And I'm Edward Todd. And you're listening to The Fresh Cred. And we're back. And we are. And we're not surprised. And we're not surprised. <laughs> All right. So if you all have been listening, as promised, we have our first guest of the day. But we would be remiss to not thank our sponsors to start the day. I know we did once already, but I think it's important, right? Got to pay the bills, baby. Got to pay, gotta the, pay bills. the bills. Yeah. So we've got some great partners, and we want to thank them real quick. And that is Laws Logistics, Thanks LLC, Real Time Intelligence, Full Tilt Marketing, SunFed. Yay. IFCO. Yay. Chakra Vision. Yay, yay, yay. Chakra. And of course, the great and generous folks at International Fresh Produce Association for having us, for setting up this great venue for us. So thank you very much to them. Um, I think we mentioned earlier that Kathy Burns will be with us wrapping up the day. Give us a lot of the statistics of attendees, where we'll be next year, which I don't know where we will be next year. All right, yeah, we probably should find that out. Yeah, so. I mean, I, you course, probably think... Of course, I was have. talking earlier. I thought, I thought we were in Orlando this year, so it's like, uh, I, you know, well, I, I'm preparing for next year. Are, Maybe it's Orlando. I'm just ahead of the You time. are a wee bit psychic. So, <laughs> um, all right, so as promised, our first guest is from IFCO, one of our sponsors, and um, a good friend, and... Is IFCO a country? <laughs> He's from IFCO? Almost. <laughs> The company okay. right, that he yeah. works for. He so. works for IFCO. He's yes, not actually is. from there. He's not, that's Inigo not actually Canalejo, <laughs> Vice President of ESG and Strategic Marketing from IFCO, joining us from Madrid. There we go. Yeah, that's it. He's from Spain. Spain, that's the country. Good morning. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, super excited to have you here. You know, uh, Ed was, he's, he's told me some about you. Enough to, you know, to, to wet my beak, as they say, in terms of interest. Uh, there, there's, there's a million things I could probably have a conversation about. But, you know, Ed, I guess, spent some time with you guys last week over there in, uh, in beautiful Europe. Was that last week you were in Europe? It's kind of all the fog still, oh but I God. think it was, yeah, I think I got back last week, late last week. Yes. This, this guy lives. So he's, you know, he's jetting off to Europe one week. He's jetting to the West Coast. Anaheim. He's red-eyed back to Texas today so he can, you know, pack up his bags and go glamp it up in Colorado and elk hunt, as, as they say. I don't think he actually ever elk hunts. But uh, he takes pictures of other people's elk hunting. It's about as DIY as you can think, so <laughs> come on up whenever you're ready. <laughs> no, all seriousness. Uh, glad to have you here for sure. Um, Ed, you want to you know talk a little bit about what you guys did last week and uh, give us a little background? Well, I think for folks that don't know what ESG is, perhaps maybe we can talk a little bit about your role at IFCO and what your focus is. I think it's super interesting. And Craig, do you know what ESG is? I do know. Well, uh, let me give me a check. Uh, uh, let's see what. Let's see. Let's what see what you, what you got. Let's see what you got. Sure. Let me explain. So. Um, ESG stands for economic, uh, uh, sorry, environmental, social, and governance, uh, which is sort of like a step forward in sustainability. Uh, so it's a much broader term that defines how companies are addressing, let's say, issues around sustainability. Sustainability was usually more focused on the environmental piece, uh, but we know that uh, companies need to look beyond, let's say, the economic and the environmental piece, but also look at the social uh, and the governance issues are associated to companies. So when the whole move uh, started many years ago, it, it was more around um, social purpose, let's say, and about um, providing, helping the community, uh, maybe with charity work and things like that. That evolved to sustainability, and then beyond sustainability, now it's ESG. So it's a broader term that talks about the responsibility that companies have with you know, their activities beyond economic, let's say, uh, profit or economic growth. Uh, talking about the people, the community, right. the environment, and of course the planet. Right, right, right. Well, I know you know, for you guys, that's your core, right? I mean, with IFCO, you're 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 at the very center of sustainability, right? I mean, you, you, as a company, that's like I say, that's at your core. And now this is just taking that to the next level, I guess. Correct. Yeah, I, I often say I'm really lucky because I I wake up in the morning and I work for a sustainable company. Right. And that's my role. Right. So most companies are not that lucky. Most people 
uh, because they need to make a transition into a sustainable business. Uh, as, as you rightly said, our, our company is built on the principles of sustainability, the principles of the circular economy, uh, sharing and reusing assets, uh, sharing and reusing materials, uh, extending the life cycle of products. That's all what we do. Right? So it's a really easy start, let's say. However, we're not just standing there. We know that we need to go beyond that. We need to, we need to do a lot more to become even more sustainable. And that's why the whole ESG topic is so interesting because it's not just the environmental part, which is intrinsic to our business model, is everything else around what we do as a business. I think he's saying his job's easy. Yeah, it, it sounds like <laughs> it. sounds like a piece of cake. <laughs> so ESG has been a buzz acronym for a while now in the U.S. Um, can you give us a sense for how long it's been a buzz acronym in Europe? Um, or a concept, let's say. I say acronym yeah. because it's... I would say sustainability in general has been uh, probably stronger in Europe than it has been here. Uh, ESG may be similar uh, because there's also a very strong uh, uh, component to ESG around risk and, and, and let's say investments, right? So it's become a buzzword because a lot of investment companies and trade, publicly traded companies are looking to avoid risks associated to ESG. And then it, it's been more on the spotlight because of that, let's say. So sustainability has been around, obviously, for, for many years. And there's been companies that have been working around sustainability, the broader sense of sustainability for years. Now the whole topic of ESG has captured a lot of attention because of these you know, risk-related re topics and because of the investment community as well. So I've been working in sustainability for 10 years. And I remember my first, my first conversations with customers as a supplier uh, speaking about what we were doing and the initiatives and how we could collaborate, you know, a lot of their responses were, okay, yeah, that's that's great, but, you know, I really want to talk about quality or I really want to talk about price, things like that, no? Yeah. That's changed drastically now. It's actually Agreed. customers that come to us and say, well, what are you doing around sustainability? Or if we launch a new product, for example, how is it more sustainable than what you had before or the alternative in the market? So to me, that's fantastic, right? Because it's not so much about convincing uh, what we are doing is actually a demand to the stuff that we're doing. And even from a personal point of view, I've been asked you know, many times when, when I spoke to friends or people around me about my job. So you work in sustainability. What is that? You know, and this yeah. is maybe three years ago. It's okay. not that long ago, right. right? People had no clue what sustainability is about. And a lot of them were actually afraid to ask, to be honest. It's like, well, whatever, that sounds like wishy-washy. You know? <laughs> and now there seems to be more interest on the metrics, how the activities are measured, how they're posted up against, you know, individual companies' goals. I, I, we, I personally see that more as well. So that's very encouraging to see. As Craig, you mentioned, um, I did have the fortune of, of visiting Spain. Um, I flew through a couple of other countries, but I was in Spain for almost a week. And it's, it's clearly visible. I mean, as, as, as much as it is ingrained recycling, reusability, I would say ingrained, that might be a stretch, in America, um, it's, you can tell it's definitely more part of the daily life in, in Europe. Yeah. Um, you know, trends, particularly in, I think, fresh foods and retail grocery. I mean, the RPC was born in, in Europe. In Europe, yeah. Um, as you know, um, from your IFCO days. No, so. it, it's it's it, for for whatever reason, yeah. The European certainly from a from a fruits and vegetable consumption, it's much higher there than here, uh, and yeah, when you get into sustainability and things like that, certainly, uh, it just they seem to be forerunners in that uh, those spaces, right? And and I don't know, there's probably some different reasons why that would be the case, but. I don't know. I would be I would be completely making it up if I try to tell you what I thought it would be. So we'll just go from there. I do have a question though. So born and raised in uh, Madrid? No, actually born in Pamplona. Pamplona. I, I lived in Pamplona until I was eight, and then I moved to Madrid, and then I've lived abroad as well. Yeah. He was a bull runner. Right? <laughs> is that yeah, where the bulls run? That's right. Okay. Pamplona is where the bulls run, and I have run with the bulls. Uh, have you? But I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so I was going to ask. I, that, that's <laughs> kind of... Uh, I think there's on. an age limit. <laughs> <laughs> there's no age there's limit, mister. No, not officially. No age limit. Okay. Well, we're going next oh, year. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. down. We do that. And you, you get to throw tomatoes at each other, too, right? <laughs> Isn't that the... It's, it's, I heard that so many times. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the whole thing together, right? Tomatoes, bulls, really? bull fights, all... No, no, it's not. It's a, it's <laughs> no, a it's not. <laughs> it's a completely different town, you know, like 500 miles away. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. 
So born and raised there. Did you grow up uh, wanting to be a, a ESG uh, leader? That's a good question. No, probably not, to be honest. I mean, um, I'm an engineer. I studied engineering, and I did grow up. My dad was an engineer, so I did grow up um, making things and building things. I always liked that. Uh, I always liked, the, let's say, the, the mechanics of things. So I studied mechanical engineering in Michigan. Um, and I worked in the automotive industry uh, before going into into reusable packaging, where I've been for for 17 years, or actually a bit more now, 19 years. Really? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, but even even in the automotive industry, when I was working there, um, one of my last roles was around uh, product um, optimization, which is about reducing the weight of a car, and that has obviously a very strong cost component, but also a very strong environmental component. So. Right. This was obviously many years ago, but uh, companies still do it now, have engineers dedicated to making things lighter so that they are more sustainable and cheaper as well. You know, so that, that, that begs a, a question. So you, you, you kind of let off, and this, and this is a personal uh, for me. I'm curious what, what you think about being in the ESG space and having an auto background. You know, this big movement to electrified battery operator, right? Mm -hmm. So So... You know, I get the lower emissions, certainly have that. But obviously, there's a tremendous amount of natural resources that have to be mined and then, you, you know, made to where they can be usable into batteries or whatever. But then even beyond that, I mean, does anybody have a plan for these batteries when they're no longer usable? I mean, what are we doing with all this stuff, you know? So I'm just curious, what are, you, yeah. what are your thoughts and, and are we... Are we running too fast at something that maybe, uh, if, if we're really trying to do something to... Unsustainable. Something to be sustainable. Yeah. Are we really thinking it all the <laughs> way through? Yeah. Or are we just like, everybody's bought into this, so let's just go, even if it's truly that... Yeah, that's my question. No, it's, is it creating a bigger problem, right, than what it's trying to solve? Yeah. Look, I think it's a transition, to be honest. There are plans. I mean, there are already initiatives that, that take old batteries and recycle them and reuse them to other purposes, like, for example, using them at home. Uh, where they don't need to be as efficient as uh, what, how they need to be in a car or having as many cycles. So I think there are, let's say, some solutions to the problem. It's definitely not the ultimate solution, you know, electric vehicles and batteries, uh, but it's a transition. And I think that's what's important. We need, we need to do things in order to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels. And this is one way of doing things. Uh, it's, it's not the final solution. It will, I think it improves with emissions. And I think emissions are obviously uh, an extreme urgency right now, CO2 emissions. Uh, but it's also thinking ahead and planning around what, what to do with the waste, how to manage that. And, you know, with a lot of ESG topics, we don't have all the answers. That's the reality. Yeah. You know, even, even for us as a company with, with our objectives, when, when we set our objectives, uh, long-term objectives are sustainability, you know, we don't have a clear list or, and a clear path on everything that we need to do because we know that the solutions are not there yet. But yeah. they will come, right? And if you, you have the ambition, you set the goals, you, you set those ambitious targets, then you're going to work collectively to make things happen and change things so that you are able to achieve them in the future, even if now we are not sure how we will achieve them. Yeah, the needs have to be identified, right, before you can find the, create the solution. So yeah. do you have a battery-powered car, Craig? Is that what you were asking? I, well, I do. I, I mean, yes, I do. Do you really? Well, yeah, it's a hybrid. It's okay. a Ford Fusion hybrid. So it's, in fact, it's old technology. So I, it's, it's a 2018, so... My, pretty much my entire car, there's virtually no trunk. It's a battery, right? You know, it's back, you know, I'm sure they're much better today. And, but, yeah, that's, I do. So I got one that's, that's like I say, it's partially. And, uh, you know, it's great fuel economy, easy to plug in. I mean, it, I mean, I like the concept, but it's, yeah, you got to start to think, what do you do? With, heck, I don't know what to do with my batteries now that are, you know, double A, triple A, for crying out loud. That's much an easy less. One. Yeah. Recycle them. <laughs> Just recycle them? Yeah. <laughs> But Hopefully you can take them somewhere. Again, I was going to say where. I don't yeah, know. You know see, that's, that's, that's probably a difference between Europe and, and here. I mean, everybody in Europe would know where to take a battery yeah. to recycle. See, in Europe, they don't just have the blue uh, bin. They have blue, yellow, green, oh. red. It's, they have four different kinds of or four different categories for the recycling bin. So. so I was in Iceland a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's right. And so they had the same program. They got it all squared away. So it's similar to what you're talking about there is exactly that. Now, I, and I, I tell this, what I'm about to say about the best, one of the, one of the most turnkey sustainable solutions is a company called Nespresso. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> what, what are you going to laugh for? Nespresso, they, they do the coffee pot, right? right? Yeah, I know Nespresso. So yeah, these, we're familiar. These guys, these guys, they get a UPS bag, right? So all of my Nespresso pods, it, so me as a consumer, I don't have to worry about a bin. I, you know, my problem is sometimes with a bin is I think that the guy that's picking up my trash is just throwing it in the regular trash anyway. So I'm not completely convinced anything that I'm doing is doing anything. But with the Nespresso pods, they give you the little UPS envelope, fill that dude up, seal it, drop it in. You no know, postage required, nothing. Now, and I can only assume that they're actually doing with what they're supposed to, but that is a true circular solution where they've done everything they possibly can to make it as painless and cost least cost me the least amount of money on my side. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of stuff, you know, I mean, I've even tried to think about that within our company and trays and stuff like that. But similar to what you guys, you know, in the, in the RPC world, I mean, you know, it's, it's all about trying to make it to where people don't have to spend extra money. People don't have to spend extra time because if you mm-hmm. don't make it easy, for the end user, people aren't going to participate. Yeah, no, certainly. <laughs> we were, I, I laughed because we talked about my, one of my favorite things about being over there was there's Nespresso everywhere. I almost brought the machine home from me <laughs> with me from my hotel. <laughs> yeah, and all different sizes Nespresso machines. So I've been shopping. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. But mm. big fan. Ah, uh, yeah, I've had a couple, and uh, I highly recommend. And yeah, they're 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 great coffee makers. You have an espresso? I, I do. All yeah. right, see so you guys. Yeah. yeah. There's one, there's one big difference between, let's say, the sustainability attributes to Nespresso and what we do ourselves, which is the difference between recycling and reuse. Uh-huh. Uh, so recycling is great because you're not throwing things away. You're not throwing waste to landfill, but right. you're still generating the, the waste in the first place. You know? Reuse is about actually not generating the waste, managing that product throughout its life cycle so that you can use it many, many times so that you don't need to recycle. Right. Yeah. Right. So nothing wrong with it, but it's just a, probably a step further. Step further, they could go with that, yeah. Yeah, our, our buddy Tim Debus, I heard him speak a while back, and, he, and something he said has stuck with me, and it's re- recycling should be the last resort. If we could get to the point where recycling is the last resort, we're doing, we've done something. Yeah, yeah fair enough. All right, um, Spain. I've been there once, 24 hours. <laughs> I, slept too. I slept too. I slept too. Hey, uh, Madrid, in fact. And so, yeah, we went, you know, dinner started, I think, at 9.30. That's pretty that early. Was cocktails, actually. Yeah. It was not dinner. Yeah. That was just the cocktail part. Um, and, uh, yeah, we get back, and um, I'm in Spain. So I, I can't not go to Spain and not at least see what the nightlife's like, right? You bet. Uh, so I get out, and we go, and it's uh, 12.30 or so. And the guy took us to the place, said the place to go. And it was like a Monday night or something, so didn't expect much. Uh, and you get there and go in, and there's nobody there. I mean, it's this place is empty. Walk in, and best I can communicate with the bartender, I was like, you know, well, you know, it's, it's a bad night, no, nobody here. And he's like, just wait. It's like, okay, got a drink, hung out, and listened to the music. And next thing you know, I go back 45 minutes later. It's now pushing 1 o'clock. I was like, a few more people have shown up. And he's like, just wait. Man, by the time it hit about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, the floodgates were open. And this place was packed. Now, like I said, I had a bus ride that we were going to tour the city on that left, I think, at 7 or 7.30 the next morning. So when, when it struck about 4.30, 4.45, it became time to go home. And so <laughs> and I didn't get to packed. see it. It was still packed. Yeah, yeah. we left. It was, packed. it was I was everything I could do not to just stay there and say, hey, you know, I'm not going to make the tour. But, uh, <laughs> you anyway, made it. I, 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 made, probably, I made the tour. But that's always my, my, my one story about Spain. Oh, but, I, but it, I'm going to Italy. Never mind. But anyway, that's, uh, that was, that's great town, great space. Food was, we had a great dinner, fabulous food. How was the wine? Wine. You what drink you, what wine, you right? make think think I would drink any wine? Oh really? Yeah, seriously. I mean, you know I'm not a wino. No. <laughs> An enophile. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I do love some wine, and uh, you know I, I understand that maybe you could have some recommendations on wine uh, uh, next yep. time I'm in Spain. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, there's there's a few good wineries in Spain. Yeah. Uh, my my brother is a winemaker actually, so we have a small family winery in the north of Spain in Navarra. Oh my uh, Yeah, it's good stuff. Definitely, you should taste it. Are you, I, is there a club? Can I join? 
You can join it, yeah. Yeah, actually. And, and get it shipped here to the states. Uh, yeah, it depends on the state, actually. But you know what? I think you should go visit. It's well, yeah, it. no, bel- <laughs> yeah. taste it over there. It's gonna taste <laughs> even better. Is that right? No. So family. So your brother did it. Did, he, did you guys come up in the wine business? Or yeah, it's a it's a family tradition actually. So it was my great grandfather that started a winery in the same state that has belonged to the family for 140 years. Uh, but then that winery was sold in the 70s. And then uh, when my dad retired, my, my one of my brothers started winemaking already as a career. And when he retired in the year 2000, he decided to go back to the family business and start a brand new winery in the same place. So he had to tear down the, the fields that were with wheat, and then he replanted the grapes there. Wow. And started everything from scratch. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. That's very cool, for sure. Now, what type of grapes? So it's Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, okay. mainly, and then some Tempranillo, which is a very common Spanish grape, for and sure. Garnache as well. So it's a blend, actually. French oak? Yes. <laughs> I thought you didn't drink one. <laughs> I, I just I just admire it. Okay. I don't drink it. You know, I'm that guy I'm that guy with a bucket. I spit oh, yeah. it out. Yeah. I don't actually drink it. So. You're a true wine taster, I know. <laughs> no, I do. I'm uh yeah. I've I've hobbyist in the wine. I've done a few wines, I've made a few wines myself. Uh, cool. Mason's the only one that's ever liked them. Everybody <laughs> else doesn't. So thank thank you, Mason, for, for that. <laughs> as far as you know. <laughs> yeah, my last, the, the last one I did, uh, it didn't turn out. It was terrible. But the, the problem was, I think I'd waited too long. The yeast had gone bad, and so there was no, it, it, did, it, did, not, um, it did not fully take out the, the sugars and mm. turn into alcohol. So. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, but it's a blast. I'm very much into it. I do like it. I like the process. I like the science behind it as well. And, yeah, the opportunity for you're telling me I can go to Spain and you can hook me up with a tour? You bet. No, See. You, would, you would love it. Look, uh, where, where my brother actually does the tours himself. And it's supposed to be like a one-hour tour, and it takes him at the end like three hours. And people love it, of course, because he's so passionate about this. He will explain you everything about how wine is made. Do you mind sharing the name? Uh, yes, it's called Pago de la Reinza bit difficult to pronounce yeah <laughs> well christmas i'm getting you some if i can why don't we just go there for christmas oh, that's a little soon but yeah we can put something it, together. it's a little soon yeah. what do you mean? i don't know christmas hey we could do this show from there i was just gonna say we have the perfect setup oh my gosh wow Right, you know, mind blown. right at the winery with all of the vines. The, mm. the views. Okay, M- Mason's looking at airlines right hey, now. Craig. What Mason's? <laughs> we, 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 Iberia. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll save you some time. Um, there's a very good chance that there will be either ham, cheese, bread, or wine there. Let's just put it that way. So if you if you needed any other convincing, oh. that's what it's. So, so some of that ham from a big go. Mm. We had some that was pretty insane. I may look at flights. I may be. If, what are you doing next week? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there waiting for you. <laughs> oh, my God. No, that sounds amazing. It sounds like a great deal. And so auto industry I kind of took us off on the batteries. And so, what, so you designed, the, you said you were taking and make them more efficient. Yep. Right. And making them. But yeah, yeah. What companies? Who were you with? So I was working first for, for Opel, which is part of GM, General okay. Motors, yeah. and then for uh, Audi, Volkswagen Group, and Seat. Nice. Yeah. So you're a Formula One guy? Yeah. Are you? More, more when, they, when the Spaniards are racing, to be <laughs> honest. No, it's good because we have to. Well, you've got, um, God, um, yeah, there's a couple on the Yeah, we on. have Alonso. Alonso, yeah. Carlos Sainz. Yeah, yeah. 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 Alonso is what yeah. I was trying to think of. Yeah, so... Uh, but uh, there's only one. Uh, unfortunately, Formula One's become one driver, right now. Yep. I mean, yeah, you know, Red Bull's gonna. I guess we might as well just concede everything else, and you know, you turn it on, you're watching Red Bull. So, yep. Have you seen Gran Turismo? Well, no, I haven't. No, have you seen it? No. Gran Turismo. I don't think I have. So it's a, it's a movie. It's out in theaters now. Um, we went and saw it, and it was. I think it's based on a true story, but it seems pretty far fetched. Um, <laughs> believable enough. You know, if you go watch it, but basically it was um, a contest of gamers that would play a game, uh, a race, racing game. And um, I don't even remember what the car company was. It might have been Audi um, that did a promotion. They were trying to figure out, you know, a way to bring more attention to not only the team, but to the sport. Yeah. And they created a contest for gamers 
that were, you know, excellent, obviously, at playing the game. And within them, they picked, they chose 10, and then they sent them to a racing school. And of the best, they actually um, wound up racing real cars. It's, it's a pretty cool movie. Huh. If you're into, yeah, the action and the... Well, I mean, like everybody else, at least here in the States, the Netflix series, you know, I didn't... I never, I didn't, I barely even knew what Formula One was up until that, and it's like, oh wow, this is this is pretty cool. And then the whole show, but, but it's coming to Vegas this year. Cool, that'll be exciting. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you going? I'm planning on it. Yeah, yeah you should. <laughs> You've never seen a Formula One race? I have not. Ah, you would like it. Yeah. Gosh, we got the we we scratched the surface on some of this uh, and flew right through. We flew right. I, you know. I mean, it, I I I do think it's worth pointing out this show. It's, it's a big show. It's an important show. Um, oh, I thought, I think I thought the, you're talking about our show. I don't know. I'm talking about if uh, the, <laughs> our show is important to us as well. But um, no, definitely. I mean, you know, you think of people coming from, for example, all the way from Spain. I mean, you obviously see some value in being here. A lot of value, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, you think uh, you'll be back next year? Definitely. Okay. We don't know where though, right? Kathy's going to yeah, inform saying, us later. Yeah, I was on the East Coast this time. Yeah. Yeah. It might or might not be Orlando, but we don't want to misspeak. But, um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I, I was in Orlando last year, and I, I'm impressed by the amount of people that are here this year as well and the excitement and all of the, let's say, also, our, again, no, on my subject on sustainability, I'm part of the Sustainability Council of the IFPA, having a lot of people join, and there's more and more interest in the topic, probably – there needs to be even a bit more, to mm -hmm. be honest, uh, because the need is there. But that's really, let's say, exciting from from my part is, is that the topic is getting a lot more attention yeah. and focus, which is very necessary. More and more cool becomes more and more cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, and it's it, great to have you here with us today. I mean, I, and I, there's a lot of other things we need to cover, but I want to save some for that time when we're together at your vineyard. And uh, hanging out, sipping a glass of Cabernet, and uh, no, seriously, uh, there was a lot. I know you've got a, a great history, like I say, through the the car companies and engineering, and and what you've done in your past, and then your family, the wine business. But um, we do want to, at some point, have you back, probably, and and kind of delve into a few more things in that. But uh, yeah, can't say enough. Thank you very much. And and you know what? And and you should feel good. I mean, you're you're doing something, not just you know, your your job is not just to yeah, you know, like it's not necessarily it's not about making money, but you're actually trying to do and participating in changing, helping change definitely. the world in a positive way. So that's great too. So no, definitely very proud of what I do, and and most importantly, what my company does. So it's not just me; it's everybody in the mm -hmm. company doing that. So it's fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot, lot of great people. I've got a history with Ifco, and uh, I, I still love the company and love the RPCs and uh, like what you guys do. So for sure. And thanks for being a customer. Absolutely, and we are we are a loyal customer for sure. But uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, Ingo. Thank you.